I've always liked the Sig Rattler, but now it's evolved to be the best gun in its class, narrow as that class may be. The Rattler is an ultra compact 300 blackout PDW, smaller and lighter than my MP5A3, even with this Romeo 8 optic that weighs nearly a pound installed on it. Even so, the Rattler and 300 blackout, substantially more powerful, more versatile, with a much longer range than the 9mm MP5, offering capability mirroring the Soviet 76239 used in the AK-47 with supersonic loadings. In terms of pure noise reduction, both calibers can achieve very low sound signatures with the right combination of subsonic ammo and an efficient suppressor. God, that sounds amazing, dude. Holy crap, that's quiet. Okay. But 300 Blackout substantially more powerful and offers greater range. Moving at the same subsonic speed, a 150 grain 9 millimeter round is going to be about 30% less powerful than a 210 grain subsonic 300 Blackout projectile, while the more aerodynamic, higher ballistic coefficient 300 Blackout rounds will have a much longer effective range as well. If you want to go from supersonic AK-47-like performance to subsonic capabilities that greatly exceed the MP5 with a similar sound signature, all you need is a mag change. The 300 Blackout round itself is amazing, and so is the Rattler. Again, I've always been a fan of the Rattler, but let me explain why the Rattler LT is different this time. It's brought this platform really to the apex of its design, which I can now recommend to you without reservation, along with other legendary favorites of mine that I've reviewed on this channel, like the Beretta 1301 or, I don't know, the Glock 19. The Rattler is the smallest member of the MCX family of assault rifles manufactured by Sig Sauer. You're starting with a gun that an AR-15 user is just going to be able to pick up for the first time and use right away controls identical to the ar-15 manual of arms the same the guns even share a number of parts and accessories the mcx even has the capability to mate up to an ar-15 or an m4 lower here is my first gen with an m16 lower and the conversion kit installed that commonality with the ar-15 is likely what made it so appealing to the special operations units using this incredible firearm and for that matter some of the spec op contracts that the Rattler won required the ability to work with an M4 lower, but it's far more than an AR-15. It's a short stroke, adjustable gas piston operated platform that's incredibly modular. The MCX isn't even 10 years old yet, but SIGs evolved this platform some ways since its introduction, especially the Rattler. The first generation Rattler employed a comically short five and a half inch barrel that was so jarring to shoot that that's how the Rattler earned its name. It also had a number of proprietary-ish parts that weren't interchangeable with other SIG MCX rifles, making the Rattler not truly an MCX, but more of like an Alabama cousin wife of the MCX series, if you will. That all changes today with the LT. The Rattler LT, now completely parts interchangeable with the current generation of MCX LT rifles, LT handguards, barrels, stocks, optics, muzzle devices, bolts, bolt carriers, whatever, all interchangeable now with the Rattler LT, and that is really the big deal. It's about as modular as it gets now, and most of this was driven by operator input from the special operations community using the gun. They wanted the Rattler to work with other MCXs, but that's not all they asked for. They wanted the gun to be smaller, lighter, while being just as durable as prior Rattlers and the PDW-style MCXs. Depending on the variant, the LT series of MCX rifles can be up to three quarters of a pound lighter than legacy MCX carbines, mainly through changes to the upper receiver. Through extensive testing and development, SIGs managed to lighten the weight of the upper receiver by shaving ounces off of components in the upper, including the handguard and the receiver itself, but without compromising on the Rattler's durability. It was famously said of one of my favorite cars of all time, the Toyota Land Cruiser, will let you know how long the truck lasts once the first one wears out. 
That's where SIG is with the Rattler LT in testing. They put an absurd 85,000 plus rounds through a Rattler LT upper without it showing signs of slowing down. Therefore, any concerns about this weight reduction affecting durability would be unfounded. Indeed, it seems that the first several generations of the MCX may have been overbuilt at the expense of weight. All of the wear components inside the upper receiver are replaceable S7 tool steel parts and those can be replaced as needed. For that matter, at 85,000 rounds, you probably should have replaced the bolt carrier group and the barrel and possibly substituted some of those wear components anyways. At that point, 85,000 rounds, you've shot a five series BMW's worth of 300 blackout through your gun. Probably you're just replacing the entire upper anyways. According to SIG, while routine maintenance at 10,000 rounds is recommended, the Rattler LT can go over 20,000 rounds without small parts replacement and will still function reliably. I've got my first generation Rattler here. I subbed out the 5.5 inch barrel for the 6.75 inch barrel, the same one I've gotten here but it's got the short five inch handguard and this M16 lower. This one is one third of a pound heavier than the new LT with the MCX lower and a full length handguard. With its new complete modularity, lighter weight, improved features, the LT is now possibly the perfect PDW. Now, if it's all right with you, I'd like to talk about the features now. The Rattler LT is gonna come with a six and three quarter or seven three quarter inch cold hammer forge barrel, your choice the same length, six and three quarter inch, as the LVAW or low visibility assault weapon contract variant of this gun purportedly used by Delta Force good enough for me. This makes a lot of sense because my research indicates that although 300 blackout like 76239 is very efficient in shorter barrel lengths, there's a substantial performance increase going from the five and a half inch barrel to the six and three quarter inch or the 7.75 inch barrels while not significantly affecting the size, weight, or handling of the gun. There's a reason, after all, why SOCOM is fielding the 6.75 inch and 7.75 inch variants of this gun in the LVAW and RSAR, respectively. The version I reviewed comes with a removable muzzle device that will accommodate SIG's taper lock suppressors, an excellent design that optimizes alignment with the suppressor in the bore, purportedly, purportedly, allegedly, improving accuracy and reducing point of aim and point of impact shift. And with taper lock shoulder barrels, it doesn't require the use of shims to properly time the muzzle device or the suppressor. I use the SLH 300 suppressor, a highly functional but lightweight and low back pressure quick attach suppressor that screws onto the muzzle device with a couple of quick twists and locks into place using this handy locking ring. The Rattler LT uses a two position gas regulator valve with a plus and minus setting. You use the plus setting if the gun's dirty, if you need a little bit more gas to reliably cycle the action with subsonics, or if you just like to be hurt a little bit while you're on the range. While the minus setting works very well for firing supersonics or with suppressors that add a significant amount of back pressure, you can flip the paddle in a couple of seconds with one finger, and more importantly, this gas valve is easily replaced by the user in the field. This is important because while the Rattler LT comes optimized for use with SIG suppressors, which makes sense, there are a multitude of gas valves with different settings available from SIG, and SIG will even assist you at the customer service level in determining which gas valve will be best for your planned setup. Replacement valves are a little stout at 150 bucks, but you're talking about an incredible level of customization with the ability to install a gas valve specifically for your combination of barrel length and suppressor. As you can see in this comparison, the new LT handguard has more M-lock slots and is slimmer and more ergonomic than the original kind of blocky Rattler handguard. While it omits the QD sling socket from the old handguard, you now have a lot more real estate to M-lock a QD sock wherever you like. The LT upper receiver is less blocky, it's slimmer, more lightning cuts, just looks better than the old Rattler. Moving back to the stock, the excellent Rattler minimalist stock has been replaced with the minimalist plus stock, which has a smaller buttstock footprint, includes a much more comfortable cheek riser. It also has this push button for folding the stock. Although the hinge is pretty much identical, 
the push button just makes it even easier to quickly fold away. The stock folds firmly into place without any play, as you can see here, quickly deployed without pressing any buttons or levers. This push button integration was also at the request of a high level special operations unit who I can't identify in this video. Similarly, a spec ops unit also requested that the Rattler's gas operating system and bolt groups be compatible with other versions of the MCX being fielded by that unit and adjacent units using the MCX. Again, with the LT series of carbines, everything's gonna be interchangeable unlike the prior Rattler, and for what it's worth, the Rattler LT lower also works with all current and prior generation MCX uppers. The Rattler can be easily swapped by the user from 5.56 to 7.6239 and 300 blackout by changing just the barrel and the bolt head. You can do it yourself, two screws and a Torx wrench. Everything else is identical and functionality between the calibers is identical. Obviously, if you're going to 5.56, a longer barrel and thus longer handguard would be more appropriate, but the good news is you can easily, again, make those changes yourself. Just pop two pins and drop on a complete upper or change the barrel and handguard yourself just takes a few minutes. Funny enough, all calibers use 5.8 by 24 inch threads for attaching muzzle devices and suppressors, again, at the request of operators fielding this gun. I suppose this makes a whole heck of a lot of sense. If you've got a bunch of 30 cal suppressors and muzzle devices lying around and you don't wanna have a separate set of suppressors and muzzle devices specifically for 5.56. Now, how does it shoot? Wonderfully. Sig said these will be dropping with a two-stage match trigger. If you don't like the trigger, good news, the Rattler LT has been tested with many third-party manufacturer AR-15 triggers and should work great with any or possibly all of them. I'm not a big fan of the grip that comes on the Rattler. It's a little bit too tiny, looks kind of like an ogre's dick, but the good news is you can put just whatever AR-15 grip that you want on there. There's my only complaint other than the cost, but we'll get there. This gun is fully ambidextrous. It uses excellent AR-15 style controls. It also adds this nifty bolt release lever here on the right-hand side of the gun. It's got an AR-15 style safety, a magazine release properly fenced off to prevent accidental depression. Sounds great with subsonics and the SLH suppressor. Recoil is more than controllable in 300 blackout, although you still get that rattler effect if you fire this gun without a suppressor in place. It'll definitely wake you up. But felt recoil seems to be less than a short barreled AK-47 probably due to the reduced moving mass of the operating system in the short stroke operating system of the Rattler versus the long stroke system from a crank. Before we get off that subject, I'm not saying this is the most comfortable gun to shoot in the world, especially compared to like a 20 inch AR-15, not by a long shot, but that isn't a euphemism for this gun sucks to shoot. It's actually great. I'm just saying this gun's a PDW, personal defense weapon. It's meant to render the H&K MP5 totally obsolete and fill that role with additional capability as well, and it does this marvelously. So in terms of performance to size, this gun's incredibly capable and functional in a package that you could fit under a jacket, and I firmly believe it renders the MP5 moot. All that being said, I consider it to be relatively light recoiling relative to other PDW size rifles in this caliber. Note that the MCX bolt carrier is about half the size of a standard AR-15 bolt carrier, which means it's about half the weight. Less reciprocating mass typically means less recoil. Simply put, if there was ever a question about the legacy Rattlers being the best PDWs on the market, the Rattler LT has undeniably answered that. This is the most advanced and I think best PDW on the market. It's durable, it's reliable, modular, functional, compact, lethal, but you don't have to take my word for it. The MCX quickly becoming the carbine of choice for US SOCOM special operators with the reduced signature assault rifle, the RSAR, the Razor. You've got the low visibility assault weapon or the LVAW. You've got the Seesaw, also known as the close support assault weapon and more all used by special operators. But it's not just the US. There are now well over a dozen countries whose special operations units and police units have adopted the MCX as their weapon of choice. And this number is only going to increase. Military adoption has recognized this to be the most advanced PDW out there. And it only costs a mere $7.99. Just kidding, this motherfucker's almost $3,000 directly 
up your ass. But in my opinion, totally worth it. And really the only reason the MCX is going to be limited in terms of consumer performance in the civilian market is because of that eye-watering pricing. But think about it. Think about it. It does come in around the same price as the also premium, also used by SOCOM 300 Blackout Honey Badger. But that platform is a little bit less modular than the MCX with its diverse family of configurations. It's also about the same price as LMT's Mars PDW, while arguably offering more modularity and capability, although AR-based systems like the LMT are going to have much more parts and accessory compatibility. I guess what I'm trying to say is this. If you want a small 300 blackout just for fun, sure, you can build a short barrel AR-15 for 750 bucks or less and get perhaps up to 75% of the performance of the Rattler. However, if you want to go that last 25%, get uncompromising reliability, durability, all the benefits of a short stroke piston operating system in a package that has been adopted by some of the most dangerous and effective units in the world. It seems like 2,600 bucks street price isn't exceptionally priced when compared to its competition. Yes, the price point is a reflection of its premium status, but with guns just like anything else, you often get what you pay for. In conclusion, I have shot this platform since it was introduced. I've reviewed at least three variants on this channel since my first look at this gun five years ago. The Rattler LT stands out as the pinnacle of personal defense weaponry, whether for a professional operator or a civilian seeking the utmost in reliability and capability. The Rattler LT is the real deal. And no, I wasn't paid to say that. We're viewer supported mainly through Subscribestar. So help us out, please. Get on Subscribestar. We also give away like $2,000 worth of stuff every single month as our way of saying thank you. We do 511 giveaways. We give away six $250 gift certificates to Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. We give away four $100 gift certificates to Blue Alpha, get you a great belt or a great sling to go with your Rattler. But at the end of the day, I'm just appreciative that you're watching. Tell me what you think about my video and the Rattler LT in the comments. I really appreciate you guys. Take care.